Shalom, Mubarak, Miss Paka, peace and blessings, family. In this video, we're going to be talking about the deep level of knowledge that has to do with the Ark of the Covenant, exactly what it was used for, and exactly what it was, the deep advanced uh, technology that it was. I'm going to talk about some more bonus information, you know. This video is going out to my patrons, of course. Uh, you guys really deserve this information. By the way, this shirt, I know it's wrinkled, but it's pure fine lining. So it's a high vibrational shirt. So I'm going to be reading a little bit from my notes because this is a lot of detail and I can't memorize a lot of this stuff because it's so advanced. Uh, only an electrician or a um, somebody who studies oscillation or somebody who knows how to make a cellular device can actually explain this from the top of their head. I need notes. You understand? But first and foremost, look at the drawing that I did of it. Nice. I'm going to zoom in for you so you can see it. Now, this is what how this is how the scriptures describe the Ark of the Covenant. So in Exodus chapter 25 and verse 10 it says, And they shall make an ark of shedding wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half shall be the breadth thereof. We know that shittim wood is a rock resistant wood. It's acacia. And yes, America does have varieties of acacia wood. Acacia is a rock resistant wood and it's a very long lasting wood, right? And a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold within it and without shalt thou overlay it and thou shalt make upon it a crown of gold round about. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof. And two rings shall be in one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. And thou shalt make staves of shit and wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the side of the ark, and the ark may be born with them. The staff shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken from it. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold. Of beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on one end, and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubim be, and thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark. I would have loved this. I'm just being completely honest with you. I would have loved having something like this around me and I'm using it to communicate with the almighty power of the physical and spiritual realm. So let's look at this in depth, right? So you have this box, it has 
a gold, which is a superconductor of electricity, inside of the gold shittim wood, which is an insulator, and, in, and even more inside of that is another layer of gold. Inside was the tables of stone, and on top you have two uh, pieces of gold that stick out. These are the two cherubim. If you know anything about the cherubim, right, they are the angelic host that is in charge of guarding, right? Guard, like, uh, they guard the throne of Yah, they guard the Garden of Eden. Uh, the word Tereb, with the same word as Horeb, like Mount Horeb, it means destroyer. So the, Chere the, so the Cherubim, these are destroyers, right? What did y'all say in the second commandment? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. That means do not make a graven image for yourself, for your worship. But I will allow you to make these graven images because they're not for you. They're for me to use to communicate with you. So we were not to pay any reverence to the cherubim that set upon the Ark of the Covenant. Now, what you must understand it has two sides to it, right? Two sides. It's got a positive and it's got a negative. If you actually pay attention, it's 45 inches by 27 inches by 27 inches. So it's very, very large. It's kind of like a large battery or a large electrical condenser or a large capacitator. So a capacitator, also known as an electric condenser, have two metal plates that connect to an insulator just like the Ark of the Covenant two metal plates on the inside and out is gold but they both connect to shittim wood which is an insulator and a capacitator or electrical condenser has two terminals that stick out of them right they have a positive and negative charge when you look at a laden jar a laden jar is what you know a child can make it very simple you take glass and you cover the glass on and out with aluminum foil and you cover the glass inside with aluminum foil so you're covering it with aluminum on the inside and you're covering it on the outside with aluminum foil but you, what you but outside of the glass jar you would have a pole right and that pole acts as a terminal just like uh the cherubim and you will see lightning inside of the bottle. So that's how a Leyden jar works. It's also a type of electrical condenser. Now imagine a Leyden jar, which you can make like a third grade art project, but on a way bigger scale, and you're not using aluminum, you're using one of the world's most electrical uh, conductive minerals on a planet gold using gold and it's huge on top of that and then you got yah aiding in the power of the of the art this is why i have a patreon so i can have more money to buy more of these because it keeps running out of ink so it's a communication device, but not just any communication device. It actually acted more like a portal. Right? Because in between the, the wings of the cherubim, you could see the spirit of Yah as he spoke to you. It was almost like the two terminals, which are the two cherubim, had an electric arch between it like the two terminals of a uh, the two terminals of a taser and that electric arch connected to the spiritual realm and it acted as plasma we know that y'all appears in pla as plasma like lightning and fire electricity plasma because y'all uses plasma to show us him because plasma is the highest frequency thing that's, that exists in the physical realm. So therefore, plasma is the most spiritual physical thing. So when you see the electricity sitting between the two wings of the cherubim, it represents how Yah sits in between cherubim on his throne 
but also you will see that there is literally spiritual energy in between two cherubim but it's really just high frequency high voltage electricity now it's like a communication device because we use it to speak to y'all and it's kind of like a portal because we can literally see the spirit of y'all between the two cherubim but unlike a portal you can't walk through it because you try to even touch it you die but it's more like talking to y'all on FaceTime it was a electric device so what do I mean by an electrical device well the frequency of y'all that sat between the two cherubim was extremely high and extremely sensitive and when a priest went before the the Ark of the Covenant and, and right on when he kneeled before the Ark of Incense to burn incense the incense had to be exactly how y'all commanded it had the exact ingredients that you can see in the uh, holy incense if that incense was not his exact command or if it was what you would call a strange incense and you burned it the smoke will react to the frequency of electricity and you would die on the spot. This is what happened to Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu. They offered, they offered strange fire before Yahuwah, before the Ark of the Covenant. And that smoke, see, look, every herb has a frequency. Every, every incense has a frequency. The frequency did not react too well with the spirit of Yah, the energy that dwelt between the, the, the cherubim, right? And because it didn't react too well, Nadab and Abihu literally were electrocuted to death. It says it, it was a fire from Yah. But we can understand that this is definitely an electrical device. And the electric when the electricity is so powerful, they say this is they say this is equal. Experts on this, when they study this. They say the Ark of the Covenant had the power to discharge 10,000 volts of electricity. 10,000 volts of electricity. So that's how powerful this thing is. So 10,000 volts is enough for me to like literally become fried chicken like literally i'm i'm burning not it's not i'm not just gonna be electrocuted i'm gonna burn i'm gonna i'm gonna literally be 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 toast you understand so that's what happened to nadab and abahu everything he everything y'all uh uh commanded when it had to do with offerings when it had to do with incense when it had to do with the with with the ark of covenant when it had to do with all the holy holy things it all has to do with frequency. And I'm gonna explain that later when I break down the tabernacle, when I break down all uh, the symbolism in the tabernacle, when I break down all this, the, the importance of uh, the priest's robes. I'm gonna break it all down to you guys. If you were to touch the, the Ark of the Covenant, you're dying. Even the priest could not touch the Ark of the Covenant. Priests had to be on this side and this side, touching only the staff. They cannot touch the ark itself because if they did, they died. This is a, a non-insulated battery. There's nothing on the outside to insulate it from the electrical current that it has. The 10,000 volts of electricity that's on the ark of the covenant. Something that cannot be scientifically explained is where did this ark get its power from? We know that it had electrical conductors all on it. We know that it has terminals, a negative and a positive charge. We know that it's made out of gold, which is a superconductor. But the, the, the question is, every battery and every single condenser, every single uh, c uh, capacitator needs some type of wiring, uh, needs some type of you know, source of that electricity. 
but there was no source of the electricity that we know of, right? My belief is, it's Yah himself. Yah, since Yah himself dwelt in the Ark of the Covenant, it was his spiritual vibration that charged this up and made it extremely electric, right? There is no, this is not, you cannot remake this. I, wa I want you to understand because I saw some, some BS on National Ge Geographic. They tried to remake the Ark of the Covenant and just to see if it would have any um, electrical powers with it. And they found nothing. Why, why did they find nothing? Because Yah does not dwell in your ark. Yah was not in it. It wasn't made by the hands of his elect. You know what I'm saying? Yah's not going to dwell in that, therefore it's not going to have any power. This device would have no power if it was not for Yah. So this is not a completely 100% scientifically explainable physical thing. It, it, it would not work if it wasn't for the Almighty Yah himself. So I'm not telling you that this is a just a man-made device that can be completely explained with technology. That's not what I'm telling you. Well, we know that the, when the Ark of the Covenant was taken by the Philistines to uh, Philistia, and it was later a whole bunch of bad things started happening in the land of Philistia. A whole bunch of bad things started happening, right? So they, so the Philistines said, "Enough of this." Just bring it back to Jerusalem. So the uh, the Israelites decided to go down and Philistine, bring the ark back to Jerusalem. And then when it when it happened, one of the oxen tripped, right? And the ark kind of like you know stumbled. So a man named Uzzah, who was walking next to the ark, did like this. So that he, so that the ark wouldn't fall to the ground. He was just being instinctual, or being a very respectful person. He didn't want the holy ark to fall to the ground and break. But Uzzah died right then and there. See, scripture says in Samuel that the anger of Yah was kindled because he touched the ark. I don't, me personally, I don't believe that. Some things in scripture you just have to question. Some things in scripture you gotta understand. These were written in the perspective of people. These were written by scribes. And then over the years, it was translated so many times, people may have added certain things. You just gotta say, if it doesn't make sense, you gotta question it. And I question it. I don't think y'all was angry at Uzzah for touching the ark. I don't think y'all was angry at him at all. He was just trying to save the ark from falling to the ground. However, I think Uzzah died because he literally touched 10,000 volts of electricity. I mean, isn't that obvious? I mean, you got something very high with a negative and positive charge. You have terminals, and in the middle of the terminals, there was electricity. Like, guys, it's like a literal non-insulated taser. How is it a vibrational resonance device? Well, this is where it gets really cool. Unlike an electrical condenser, which has wires, and unlike a battery, which has um, chemical energy within it, even though the Ark of the Covenant is similar in build to both of those things, the, this has no wires and it has no chemical energy within it. So where is it getting its power from? It's getting its power directly from the Almighty Yah. And I'm going to explain how it's a vibrational device. I'm going to explain exactly how it's a vibrational device. Well, what we can see is it did two things that show that it's a, it's a vibrational resonance device. It stopped the flow of the, of the river. Not only did it stop the flow of the river, it, it says the, the river actually rose into a heap, meaning the river actually was in a solid state, but still a liquid state, right? It rose into a heap by the city of Dumim. Now, the thing, the, the really cool thing is, the only way you can make water stand up or change shape or change any type of its molecular structure is by two things. Either A, you're freezing it, 
or B, you're using vibration. My previous thought was y'all just froze the river to make it stop, but freezing it is not going to make it stand up into a heap. The only thing that can make it actually stand up into a heap is vibration. If you've seen resonance, if you've seen the vibration of water, different frequencies actually can change the molecular structure of water into any shape. It can actually manipulate the water into all kinds of geometric shapes. It can change the surface tension of water completely. See, vibrations of water even can make light. Vibrations of water can even produce light at a very, very high uh, vibration. Remember it says, the spirit of the Allahim moved above the surface of the water and he said, let there be light. And you look into the center and in the center see a, uh, a glowing blue purple light, uh, which could be seen with the unaided eye. It looked like a star in the heavens. Seth Putterman called it the star in a jar, a tiny spot of bright light contained in a flask of liquid. This star in a jar is made when a sound wave is passed through a small bubble inside a flask of liquid. And this sound wave makes the bubble do something remarkable. First it expands, then it collapses. And this collapse happens so violently that vapor molecules trapped inside the bubble slam together and heat up so much that the bubble gives off an incredible burst of heat and light several thousand times a second, giving the appearance of a star. You understand that? So light forms when the vibration of the water is extreme. And this is a fact. Vibration, in fact, can do anything. Whenever Yah does anything, he does it with vibration. But certain things only Yah can do. Not certain things, most things, Yah, only Yah can do. We can make, as humans, we can make all kinds of vibration devices. We can make all kinds of things and do all kinds of things with, the, with vibration. But I bet you, you can't speak and create something. Only Yah can manipulate the vibration of his voice to literally make animals upon the earth. You understand what I'm saying? So, by the way, I just want you to know, if anything I'm saying seems like it's contradicting something that I said a year ago or, or two years ago, that's just because I'm learning new knowledge. You understand? So, uh, the, the fact that the river, the Jordan River, stood up in a heap at the presence of the Ark of the Covenant shows that this device emits a certain frequency that can change the molecular structure of water. Also, what it did, what the Ark of the Covenant also was known to do is, this is the most, this is my favorite story about the, uh, this is my favorite story about the Ark of the Covenant that has to do with the Ark of the Covenant. So basically, during the time of the conquest of Jerusalem, uh, basically during the time of the conquest of the Holy Land, when Joshua made it to Jericho, the whole army of Israel surrounded the city of Jericho for seven entire days. And Joshua told all the troops, nobody say a word, everybody gotta be completely quiet. Everybody gotta be completely quiet. So they were quiet for six entire days. But on the seventh day, everybody screamed to the top of their lungs. Guys, this is about 600,000 men screaming at the same time. And then seven priests blew seven trumpets, right? These trumpets were made out of ram's horns. Anywhere between 420 to 440 hertz, the average is about 432 hertz, which they call the frequency of the universe. 
which is why we blow our trumpet in the beginning of the month. It emits a very great frequency. And there's something called resonant frequency, right? Resonant frequency is basically when everything has a resonant frequency. These glass bottles have resonant frequencies. When I hit them against each other, you hear the resonant frequency. That's the frequency. That's the frequency of this glass, right? That's the that's the frequency of this glass. Now, if I were to scream, right? And I were to match the frequency of the glass, it would literally make this noise. You would hear it. I wouldn't even be I wouldn't even be hitting it. You would just hear this. If I'm if I start to scream and it matches this frequency. Now if I keep doing that for a very long time and I increase my volume, then this glass will break. So by 600,000 people screaming plus seven priests blowing trumpets, what would have happened is they would have eventually produced the same resonant frequency as the goal on the outside of the um, Ark of the Covenant. So what that would do is it would cause the Ark of the Covenant to literally vibrate. So now the Ark of the Covenant is vibrating, producing energy. So it would take a very lot for gold to break. It's not going to break with vibration. So what's going to happen is it's going to start vibrating so intense that that resonant frequency is going to then just completely crumble the walls. When you think about it, you realize the Ark of the Covenant actually has four tuning forks on it. Two large tuning forks on this side, these are the staves. You have two large tuning forks on the other side. This is why you're not supposed to take the staves out. These are big golden rods. And so they connect to it right here. And these, they, they act as very low frequency tuning forks. And then you have high frequency tuning forks right here. This is what they look like from the top. Uh, they're like regular size tuning forks, but they're very thin. Right, so uh, these are high frequency tuning forks and these are low frequency tuning forks. So you got a high frequency, you got a low frequency right there. So you can do almost any type of damage you want to do with, the, with those frequencies. And you can make any frequency you want with these two combinations. Now, another thing that I want to talk about. So we understand how it's a vibrational resonance, resonance device. But another thing I want to explain is simply this, right? Inside of the Ark of the Covenant, we got to think about what's inside of the Ark. Uh, a stone, stone tablets, right? With the Ten Commandments. Now, in my personal opinion, I don't think the stone tablets were stones just regular rocks i don't i don't believe i'm not gonna buy that i believe that the stone tablets were either topaz quartz or or uh some type of tourmaline these crystals can be found all throughout the mojave desert it would be very easy for moses or for y'all to show Moses an area where you can find big slab of tourmaline stone, quartz stone, or topaz stone. Now, what's important about these three types of crystals, which can all be found in the Mojave Desert, which is the true Sinai, is that all three of these crystals are what you would call piezoelectric, meaning when they are hit with a certain vibration and put under a certain force, they emit an extreme electricity. Quartz, for example, if you compress quartz, it literally would emit an electrical current, a very powerful electrical current. In fact, the device that you're watching this video on, 
has quartz crystals in it. Your phone, your computer, your laptop, um, watches, submarines, all kinds of different things, sonar, satellites, all types of things have quartz crystals in it, especially things that deal with Wi-Fi, especially communication devices have quartz crystals in them because quartz sends a vibration that can bounce back from one thing to another and notify the oscillators of the return because it makes a noise. But the tables of testimony, which is the 10 commandments, to be written in quartz, crystal stone, or topaz, or tourmaline, it makes a lot of sense. Um, quartz has the highest frequency out of everything on Earth. There is only one thing that you can find on Earth that has a higher frequency than quartz, and that is a crystal called motivite. But motivite comes from the heavens. Motivite is literally a meteorite, a meteorite crystal. The Ten Commandments is written in crystal, right? So guys, I uh, hope this video taught you some things. And yeah.